Thank you for joining us for our webinar on glycerin and biodiesel. I hope you find it interesting and informational. My name is Jim Peterson and I'm a sales manager at the Donaldson Company for our Hydraulics and Clean Solutions Group. And this is the fifth in our series of webinars for MyCleanDiesel.com. All of them are posted on YouTube and you can link to them through our website, MyCleanDiesel.com. Donaldson Company and our Clean Solutions Group in particular have been working for years to help our customers with a variety of fuel issues that can greatly impact performance. One issue we deal with frequently all over the world is filters plugging up rapidly due to glycerin and bioblends. We also find that these plugging episodes are often misunderstood. Fuel users don't understand why they see these things or what to do about it. As we start exploring our glycerin issues, it's probably good to start with biodiesel or bioblends and understand what they are and where they come from. Biodiesel mandates date back to the Energy Policy Act of 2005 in the United States and similar legislation in Europe and Canada. According to the biodiesel.org website, a 1998 biodiesel life cycle study jointly sponsored by the U.S. Department of Energy and the U.S. Department of Agriculture concluded biodiesel reduces net CO2 emissions by 78 percent compared to petroleum diesel. State legislation typically sets biodiesel blend rates based on desired emissions requirements and green efforts. In addition, biodiesel is registered with the EPA as a fuel additive. Its role as a lubricity improver is important, especially considering the effects of removing the sulfur from the diesel supply. Biodiesel can now be dosed as a lubricity improver below 5% in most fuel without the fuel being described as a bioblend. And this is important to remember, in the United States, you may be receiving around 5% biodiesel in the fuel that you purchase, whether you're aware of it or not. It's worth taking a moment now to talk about what exactly comes in every tank load of fuel that you purchase. Because a delivery of diesel fuel does not consist of only refined hydrocarbon fuel. A typical tanker consists of around 7,500 gallons. But with that 7,500 gallons comes roughly a cup of, of sand, of dust, of what we call hard particulate. You also get a gallon or two of dissolved water and around 375 gallons worth of biodiesel. And it's sometimes helpful to think of that as like a hot tub full of biodiesel. That's roughly how much we're talking about. And that 375 gallons of diesel has a gallon of glycerin. And rounding that all out is a varying amount of different required fuel additives that are in the fuel. Biodiesel is a generally plant-derived alternative fuel to petroleum refined fuel. In the United States, it's most commonly made from soybean oil. In Canada and Europe, it's made from canola oil, also known as rapeseed oil. It can also be made of animal fat or tallow, as well as other plant sources. However, Contrary to urban legend, biodiesel is not unprocessed fryer grease. While you may hear stories about people manufacturing their own diesel from these types of sources, this is not a standard manufacturing process of biodiesel-based stock. You may find these products in the feedstock of your biodiesel, but not in the base stock. Biodiesel is created by running plant oils, soybean oil and alcohol, through a process that breaks the plant oil into fatty acid methyl ester, or FAME, and glycerol, also known as glycerin. Now FAME is the fuel portion that comes out of this process, and glycerin is a byproduct that needs to be removed. Glycerin is removed by exposing the biodiesel to water in the manufacturing. And the glycerin is washed out of the fuel to mandated low levels of 200 ppm free glycerin at 100% biodiesel. When talking about biodiesel, we are rarely talking about 100% biodiesel, or B100. Biodiesel is commonly blended into ultra-low sulfur diesel at 5, 10, and 20% concentrations. These are typically referred to as B5, B10, or B20 blends. And these are averages based on when the fuel is blended. The batch of biodiesel you just purchased might come in somewhere above or somewhere below those actual numbers. For certain applications, biodiesel may be run at much higher percentages. Some states, for example, offer tax credits for running higher concentrations of biodiesel. And it may be important to keep this in mind when considering what blend is right for you. As with just about anything, biodiesel does have both some positive and not so positive characteristics. 
In addition to lower CO2 emissions, biodiesel improves lubricity, which is vital for getting it down to you through the pipeline. And generally speaking, biodiesel has a higher cetane number than ultra-low sulfur diesel, and this is important because it improves combustion. Finally, biodiesel also changes water solubility significantly, and this means that the fuel can hold more water below saturation. On the flip side, biodiesel has a slightly lower heat content than petrol diesel, meaning a little less energy is provided for the same amount of fuel burned. Stability is also a concern with biodiesel. According to biodiesel.org, biodiesel is less toxic than table salt and biodegrades as fast as sugar. This of course means that it is not stable in long-term storage and it be can begin to oxidize or rot quickly. Now this may not be a large concern if you're someone who turns your fuel supply over quickly. However, for users that store diesel for longer periods, such as uh, emergency backup generators, um, you might see stability issues. And fuel stability is decreased to a few months, generally, rather than a year or more for regular petroleum diesel. Additionally, water separation becomes more difficult with biodiesel blended into fuel. As I mentioned, biodiesel can improve water solubility greatly. However, the use of biodiesel also makes it more difficult to coalesce that water back out of the diesel fuel. A final note, glycerin, which is the theme of this webinar, can be an issue with biodiesel, and we'll touch on that in just a moment. The good news is that properly blended and stored biodiesel should not cause you any additional headaches. FAME, the fuel portion of biodiesel, is not generally an issue for cold weather operability or solids formation. The issues tend to arise with glycerin. Glycerin is regulated to a maximum of 200 ppm in B100, 100% biodiesel, and has several characteristics that cause issues. The biggest problem is that glycerin drops out of fuel as temperatures cool and moisture levels in fuel increase. The temperature at which this reaction occurs is actually quite high, well above the normal cloud point for traditional number two diesel. The result is that biodiesel blends can be very filterable at one moment, but begin forming solids and plugging things the next. It's more unpredictable than non-bio-blended fuel, and we see this frequently in recent years at Donaldson. Filter plugging caused by glycerin in biodiesel is probably the most common issue we come across with fuel filters, especially before the deepest parts of winter set in. As mentioned before, Glycerin is a known byproduct of the biodiesel process. Glycerin has many uses. It's found in lip balms, makeup, pharmaceuticals, sunscreen, and soap. And by itself, it becomes a solid at just below room temperature, right around 60 degrees F or 15 degrees C. Of course, in your diesel fuel, this can cause filter plugging at much higher temperatures than typical number two diesel. Due to this, glycerin is regulated to below 200 ppm at B100. However, as the percentage of bio in the fuel goes down from B100 to B50, B20, B10, and so on, the solubility of the glycerin in the fuel blend goes down. And if glycerin is found at higher concentrations in your fuel, problems occur. As glycerin falls out of solution in a bio blend, it begins to form solids 1 to 2 microns in size that can agglomerate into larger solids with time. And in your bulk tank, these very small solids can form and be pumped into a filter or settle and further agglomerate. A very thin slippery film is more than enough to overwhelm the dirt holding capacity of a typical filter since the glycerin particles can be present at a much higher concentration than the traditional hard particulate debris. Depending on what form the glycerin happens to be in and system conditions, plugging can take on many different appearances. And I've got some representative images here that show you the different types of looks that a, a glycerin plugged filter might have. Glycerin precipitation typically happens well above the cloud point of a fuel. The cloud point of a fuel is a temperature at which visible wax crystals begin to make a sample of fuel look cloudy. Glycerin dropout typically will not do this and can happen at 40 to 50 degrees F above the fuel's actual cloud point. Many glycerin plugged filters will feel slimy or slippery. And glycerin seems to be the most common cause of this condition, though certainly not the only one. And the glycerin uh, dropout will not only coat your filter, but also can coat pipes and pumps and other fuel infrastructure, or it can drop to the bottom of the fuel, res fuel reservoir. Glycerin issues are not always properly diagnosed, which can lead to misapplied remedies. 
It is important to draw a distinction here between glycerin symptoms and other relatively common fuel issues. Glycerin forming solids or settling out of fuel is not the same as fuel gelling. Fuel gelling occurs naturally as the fuel glow goes below its cloud point. And there are many ways to deal with this phenomenon such as cold flow improvers, cold weather fuel blends, modifying your number one and number two blend, and so on. And you can learn more about this topic at our webinar, Diesel and Cold Weather, which is posted at MyCleanDiesel.com. Additionally, slippery films of glycerin on filters are not indicators of algae or bugs, microbial growth, biofilming. So treating your fuel for microbial growth will not solve a glycerin issue. So what can be done to avoid or minimize problems with glycerin? Regarding filtration, there is good news and bad news. Filtration on your bulk storage tanks should prevent most or all glycerin that has fallen out of your diesel from reaching your equipment. Filtration on your equipment should do the same to prevent the glycerin from gumming up vital fuel components such as pumps and injectors. It is important to remember, however, filtration can only do so much to prevent a glycerin issue. Here are some keys to minimizing glycerin problems in your fuel. Keeping your fuel dry. As I mentioned earlier, water is used to wash glycerin out of fuel in the manufacturing process. And as fuel containing biodiesel is exposed to water, it will increase the likelihood of dropping glycerin in the fuel again. If your tank does contain large amounts of water, and I think it's safe to say that almost 100% of tanks have some water, then a proper tank flushing and clean out may be required to minimize glycerin dropout. Keep it warm. This, of course, is much easier to say than to do. However, the more you can moderate the temperatures at which you store fuel, the better off you will be. As fuel cools, the glycerin is also getting closer to the temperature at which it can begin to form solids. It can stay in solution and liquid below 60 degrees F, but as water conditions and temperatures change, it is more likely to fall out as a semi-solid or solid that will collect in tank bottoms or in filters. Turning your fuel over. Recall that biodiesel breaks down as easily as sugar, meaning it oxidizes or rots easily. And this equates to poor fuel stability and storage and increases the likelihood of deposit formations. The longer you store your fuel, the more issues that can arise, in addition to glycerin fallout. Turning your fuel over more quickly will provide better results. Paradoxically, keeping your tank full will also help. Full tanks are less susceptible to condensation, so the fuel will typically be drier. Therefore, when possible, it is key to appropriately size your tanks to minimize storage time while keeping the tank as full as possible. Finally, simply keeping your fuel as clean as possible will help with minimizing the effects of glycerin. For example, many equipment manufacturers recommend higher detergent levels in fuels containing bio to try and keep glycerin in solution both on equipment and in bulk fuel storage. You also want to store the fuel as clean as possible. Fine particulate and fuel and dirty infrastructure serve to accelerate fuel breakdown and instability. Clean tanks regularly and use good filtration and breathers to keep external ingress of debris to a minimum. So what are the takeaways from this webinar? First of all, Considering it may not be possible for most of us to avoid biodiesel due to regulations and its use as a lubricity improver, it may be best to operate under the assumption that you are already receiving some biodiesel in your fuel purchases. Work with your equipment OEM to understand and follow recommended measures for operating on biofuel regarding topics such as detergent, cleanliness levels, acceptable bioblends, filter requirements, and so on. Finally, keeping your fuel and infrastructure as clean and dry as possible are highly recommended. Routine tank cleaning, preventing water ingress, these types of measures will go a long ways towards preventing or minimizing the effect of glycerin on your operation. As always, your local Donaldson rep and the entire Donaldson organization are committed to working with you to make sure the cleanest, driest fuel reaches your equipment and ensures you keep running. Thank you for taking the time to join with us on this webinar. As we finish up, I do want to recognize my colleague Jim Doyle for putting this webinar together. Jim's expertise in all areas diesel fuel are a big asset to Donaldson. I also want to thank those of you who have joined us at MyCleanDiesel.com and have connected with us there. It continues to be a great resource for all things diesel. 
Please plan on joining us on January 21st and 22nd for our next webinar. You'll get an uh, email invitation soon. But in the meantime, if you have any questions or would like Donaldson to perform a free audit to help determine how Clean Diesel can help you achieve more, please contact us anytime through the website or you can call me directly at 952-887-3311. Thank you and have an excellent day.